Today, we're going to talk about my 15 best tips for beginning breath holders. Number one, don't eat. Most breath holders, when they go for a maximum breath hold, they do this in a fast state. Now, when are you in a fast state? Well, right after when you wake up. Like here in, in Thailand, it is 9 a.m. I just woke up like two hours ago. I haven't eaten yet. So I'm doing this stream in a fast state. Let's say if the last time you ate the night before was 6 p.m., and you wake up at 6 a.m. the next day, that's already 12 hours without eating. So that's what you want. You want to be in a fast state for at least a couple of hours, but to make it even better, just do your breath hold early in the morning before your breakfast so that you have at least 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 hours without eating. Number two, don't exercise. You don't want to go lifting weights or running long distances or doing whatever kind of physical activity before you hold your breath. Now, once again, if you'd hold your breath right after you wake up, then probably you haven't been doing any physical activities during the night, right? Because you were sleeping, but also the day before, don't go to the gym. So um, if you want to go for a maximum breath hold, let's say on a Tuesday morning, then on Monday, you just don't do any physical activity or just limit it to the absolute minimum. Because if you go, if you do go to the gym, then your body is processing this. Your body is recovering. And all that energy that goes to recovering is energy that you cannot use to hold your breath longer. Number three, sleep well. If you sleep only five hours, you are sleep deprived and you will not be able to hold your breath as long. So make sure you sleep enough so you are, you are fully, fully rested. When you wake up in the morning, first thing you do is you hold your breath. Number four, well, go to the toilet, right? You don't want to think about going to the toilet while you hold your breath because you want to relax all your muscles. And that means also the muscles that are responsible for going to the toilet. So be mindful about that. Number five, be warm. So when you get into position to hold your breath, whether that is on dry lands or um, in the water, make sure you are warm. So on dry land, you want to lay down on your bed, on the couch, on a yoga mat, and put a blanket over you. If you are warm, then you can hold your breath longer. The opposite, if you are cold, you start shivering, you are using oxygen. And when you're using oxygen, that is oxygen that you cannot use to hold your breath longer. If you're holding your breath in the water, make sure you are using a wetsuit. Number six, always have a buddy. Now, if you're breath holding dry on the couch, on your bed, you can do this alone. Because if, in worst case scenario, this is not going to happen, but if you would black out, you would just wake up again. Now, if you hold your breath in the water, always be with a buddy. Always be with someone who is skilled and who can perform a rescue operation, a rescue procedure on you in case you would lose uh, consciousness. Because if you lose consciousness in the water and no one is there, there is no way to wake up from this because if you wake up, your airways will be in the water and you will drown. So this is how accidents happen when free divers, they dive alone or when they hold their breath alone in water. In the water, always have a buddy. Number seven, warm up. Okay, so now that you know all the previous, you want to hold your breath for as long as you can, right? Now, I know breath holding is not about time. It's more about feelings. But still, in the back of your mind, you want to hold your breath as long as possible. Are you going to hold your breath immediately as long as you can? No, you're going to do a couple of warm-ups. Before you do your maximum breath hold, you're going to do at least one or two smaller breath holds just to get your body and your mind used to breath holding and to, you know, get yourself going. And then after one, two, maybe maximum three warm-ups, you can do a maximum breath hold. Number eight, relax totally. When you get into position, so on you, when you do dry breath holding, you're going to lay down on your bed or on the couch. Then you're going to lay down on your back and just relax all your muscles. You want to be sure that there is no tension in your muscles and that you are just fully, fully relaxed because that way you will be able to prepare better for a breath hold. If you would be holding your breath in the water, if you wouldn't be preparing yourself for that breath hold, you're just going to sit down. Um, you're going to um, rest your back against the, the side of the pool, like just if you're sitting down on a chair and breathe up like that. The moment you take your final breath, then you're going to lean forward and uh, have your face submerged in the water. Most of you will practice breath holding dry because then you can practice it alone. So you want to lay down on your back and relax all those muscles. Number nine, take a big final breath. A big breath means taking in as much air as you can. So 
after you do your breed up, which is the time that you prepare for your breath hold, you're going to take a final breath, final big breath, and then hold your breath. How are you going to take that breath? You're going to do the two-part breath, first in the belly and then in the chest. So if you don't know what is belly breathing or chest breathing, you can scroll through my uh, YouTube channel. There's a lot of explanation about that. Basically, you want to take five seconds to fill the belly and the chest. So it goes like this. And then you hold your breath. First in the belly, then in the chest. Number 10, relax the mind. So when you are holding your breath, you just want to be relaxed in here. Remember that breath holding is a mental thing. It's not so much physical, it's a mental thing. The more relaxed you are in here, the longer you can hold your breath. So you don't want to think about time. Time is the last thing you want to think about. You for sure are not going to look at the clock, at the timer. You want to close your eyes and be totally in your own world. Relax your minds. Number 11, how are you going to do that? Well, there's different tricks so you can focus on feelings. Do not focus on time, focus on feelings. Everything that you feel when you hold your breath, that's what you're going to focus on. And whatever it is that happens, you're going to accept it and you're going to embrace it. And that's how you learn about yourself. And that is why breath holding is an awesome tool to get to know yourself better because you're going to assess all these feelings that are happening. And later, when your breath hold is done, you can, you can think about it and you can... You can talk about it with your friends and how did you feel and and, and, have, and when, when these contractions come up and the urge to breathe starts manifesting itself, how do you feel and I feel this and I feel that. And it's just wonderful to talk about this and exchange experiences with your friends to get to know yourself better. Focus on feelings. Number 12, another trick to relax the mind is visualize. You want to visualize things that happened in your life and that you simply enjoyed so i'm having a picture here of children playing i like to visualize things that happened during my childhood because i had a really nice childhood so i like to visualize me and my um childhood friend who lived in the street in the same streets i like to visualize us walking through the streets dressed up as cowboys or indians or soldiers or whatever and walking through the street and then i go through all these streets in my mind and i see all the houses did they have a dog who was living there? Did I have friends who were living in the streets? Uh, did I ever go in, inside this house? I just go over all these details in my mind. And that is how you take away possible negative thoughts and focus on just pleasant feelings. Visualization. Number 13. Besides visualization, you can also do the body scan. And the body scan is simply going over your different body parts and imagining that the stress is going out. So let's say um, your hands and your arms, um, you want to make sure the stress is out. So you want to move your hand a little bit while you're laying down and holding your breath. So you are sure that you're relaxing 100% your hands. Then you go over your uh, forearm. You just visualize all the stress going out. Then you go towards your shoulder, the other shoulder, the other arm. Then you go towards your neck, your jaw. Make sure all the tension is out. You might want to move your jaw a little bit. Then your nose. Maybe there is tension in your nose. Who knows? So you, you, who knows, right? So you visualize the tension going out of your nose. Uh, your eyes. People sometimes carry tension around their eyes. So you might want to open, close your eyes a couple of times and make sure that the tension is going out. Your ears. Then you might want to go to your neck, your knees, your, your um, toes, your feet. You might want to move your toes. All the tension goes out. And while you're doing this, time is just passing by and you hold your breath longer. Number 14, when things eventually get more difficult, when the urge to breathe starts manifesting itself, which um, comes in the form of contractions and contractions or diaphragmatic spasms so spasms of the diaphragm, the big muscle that regulates breathing. But contractions can also happen in the neck um, or even in the chest. When this happens, relax even more. So this is why breath holding is just a wonderful tool to get to know yourself better and be stronger in life. You know, when things become more difficult, Relax even more. You could even say this is a metaphor for life. So when things get difficult, do not tense up. Do not start thinking, oh, my God, these contractions are coming now, and now it's becoming difficult. No. Change your mindset and, ah, I'm going to relax even more. Yes, 
Things are becoming a bit more difficult, but I'm going to relax even more. Try that. And number 15, when you're done breathing and you start breathing, when you're, when you're done breath holding and you start breathing again, do recovery breaths. And a reco recovery breath looks like this. Do five of them. And the reason is to get oxygen in as fast as possible. So if you would be a little bit hypoxic because of the breath hold and hypoxic mean low levels of oxygen, then you would replenish your system as fast as possible with new oxygen. Peace in every breath.